Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's lecture on how to be a self-driving car engineer. My name is Steve Kehoe. I'm the co-founder and co-CEO of BitTiger, the lifelong learning platform of Silicon Valley. I know we have some old students, some new students today, so I just wanted to say a few words about uh, uh, what we do and to welcome you all and, and introduce tonight's speaker, Andrew Sai. So BitTiger, in general, our mission, we are here to cultivate and equip the next generation of professionals with the resources they need to tackle the world's most pressing challenges. We couldn't think of a better topic to do that with than self-driving tech. Uh, autonomous vehicles are no longer just in our imagination or the imagination of science fiction writers. They're real, they're here now, and they're being built now. And this field has both the potential to save lives and also the potential to change the socioeconomic dynamics of the world we live in. Now, a couple words about Andrew. Um, Andrew is like the rare combination of uh, an engineering genius and a magnetic personality. Uh, he, having left his comfortable life behind at being an engineer for Lockheed Martin and going and building his own self-driving car from scratch in his garage in under four months. This feat has not been achieved by, by many people, very few independent engineers. And Andrew's unique approach to building and training autonomous vehicles has resulted in the founding of Vector AI. And so Andrew, along with some others from the Vector AI team are, uh, well, Andrew will lead the lecture tonight, but the whole team would be involved in this class. Um, and so our goal tonight is to give you a comprehensive overview of what it takes to be a self-driving car engineer, the various parts of the self-driving engineer stack and kind of where the industry is headed now and how we plan to prepare our students to enter the industry. Uh, we're also going to leave a lot of time at the end for Q&A with Andrew and we're also providing TA support in both English and Mandarin Chinese today so feel free to ask questions in either language um, and we'll be able to answer you throughout uh, Zoom's Q&A, feed Andrew some questions during the presentation and then also uh, open it up afterwards. So. Uh, Without further ado, I'll, I'll turn it over to Andrew. Thank you so much, Steve. Yeah, so, no problem. Um, it's great pleasure having all the people tonight. Um, we are Vector AI. Our company is have a belief that the future transportation should be a smart car. And then that's the reason we are today co-partnered with BitTiger to have a powerful, a meaningful, a class that actually help people to build the future transportation. So in 2016, as you can see on the pictures, I wanted to share you my personal story, how things get started. So in the pictures, there's me and my wife and my mother-in-law. So we crossed the country 2,600 miles to California from Florida with one month old baby. And then my, my, my wife just gave her the bird, my, my lovely daughter and my mom and my mom's in law. As you can see in the car, the whole car is full pack of the diapers and water and all the things that, you know, it's a huge move, a big move. During the way along the cross the country, I found out that it's really painful, you know, driving in I-10, Texas, from San Antonio to El Paso. My wife is always yelling at me, my, my, my mother-in-law who cannot speak English, and also my mom who can barely speak Chinese and English, always have a conversation in the car that would it be nice that, you know, you create an artificial intelligence that uh, can automate certain things to giving you more time and freedom less hectic in the driveway. So I took that into consideration. And then the next iteration of next four months after that, I started to think her on the garage. With right now she was uh, four months after that. And as you can see on the picture, I start to sniffing the Hondas, the Acras, it's all in next space, all up Python and C++ and try to retrofit the car start from from nothing this production car and in terms of production car in this case is the car has a, a level one ADAS which is ADAS stands for advanced driving assistance systems and then 
think about the whole car is like a computer. Nowadays, a car is really, really super advanced. And then you have a backup camera, you have a road mitigation departures and all the kind of stuff. Those are considered uh, advanced driving assistance systems. And then I enjoy my time with my daughter, uh, babysitting her, and then try to figure out what's going on in the car. And as you can see in the pictures, my daughter holds a paper there. And that in that paper, it's really unique because it keeps us remind that that's actually all the CAN messages that we CAN, it stands for control area network, which is that think about like a streamlined messages that flows in your car. And then that's actually all the decoded messages, specific messages, messages to control your car. So for example, like you open the door, you, um, you take the steering angle measurements from the car from wheel encoder and also control your AC shift. Everything is done by CAN. So though, those paper, it's, it's one of remarkable reminder for me to remind me back on that date. So we start from zero. We start from nothing autonomy. The car has no any autonomous uh, features. And then the car has, has no supercomputers or any kind of things, no GPS, no, no any um, stereo cameras, no LiDAR, just only cameras and, and radar to start from from the zero from from nothing from starting point now here's what vector ai is already achieved within short amount period of time as you can see so our driver on the self racing cars is actually juan pineda which is he's a race driver and then this footage is taken during the self racing cars which has just happened recently you can see there's visualizations of the radar, the point clouds, and that the car drives autonomously by itself. This is a huge achievement and milestone for vector AI that can be happened today and close to par with companies like Point One Navigations, Autonomous Stuff, Coma AI, and we came in the fourth one. So we're pretty happy, we're pretty excited. And then this accomplished by only two, uh, two people, two engineers that actually done a tremendous amount of things during the self racing cars and then we move on. Now, people, people keep asking me how I can get into this point. How can I be comfortable into this point? And then what actually I, I have learned un until this far. So, so the way I, I, I will emphasize this, is actually, I want to share with you all an extra, an extraordinary learning experience, which is this is the most reason that give give away the people community to grow better in sort of a learning experience. Learning a self driving car is not only just oh I know the part of deep learning, I know the part how using in convolutional neural networks, or I know how how to do uh, LSTMs and and all this term, long term for memory, you know how to build um, uh, behavior cloning, some sort of like that. It's not like that way. It's more focused on yourself to get the goal oriented, what you want to be in the next five to 10 years from now. Not only that, think bigger than that. Think, think like what you want to do in the next 20 years. If you want to be built a future transportations, and, and today, what you need to do is learn about how you get into that point. Same like me, when I started, I had a really limited knowledge about how actually the controls, PIDs in the car works, how SLAM works. SLAM is simultaneous localization and mapping. But I keep hustling to that. I, I keep trying to be obsessed with it. I'm trying my best to get the extraordinary learning experience. Now, the second thing that I learned too is I got a set of powerful hands-on tools, which is from CPU, discrete GPU, the real GPU, and then system on chips. Those are actually what driving an autonomous vehicle in the next 20 years from now. And not only what autonomous vehicle is gonna happen, it's also part of the car that actually driven by semiconductor chips 
that actually giving more interface to the people, the car that can talk to you, the car that knows what to predict uh, another people's behavior, understand enough with the artificial intelligence itself with the power of deep learning. Or for example, you want, you want to, the car understand enough what the outcomes of your next move. And that's the power of the computation itself that we currently have today. And I cannot get that far without these tools. So GPU, discrete GPU, you know, from Titan X, GTX 1080s, 1070s, or whatever the tools of what you have, it's a set of our own tools that actually bring you into the area of autonomous driving. Now, the third thing is what I've been really want to focus in what we're trying to do is actually future networks in the place of autonomous vehicle. So think about this way, you have a set of tools, you have the knowledge, but you're not in the right community. You're not in the right place that you can stand off in front of, of your potential employers and stand up in front of, of the people that actually want to hire self-driving car engineer. So having a, such a good community, having such a network that helps you out in the place in autonomous vehicle, it's gonna accelerate you both sides and the mutual benefits, both from the company perspective and also from the yourself as a job seekers perspective. Now, and then today, with the power of external ordinary learning, sets of powerful hardware, and then powerful network, it combines together as a class given hardware and a network. And then we want to have the build your own autonomous vehicle. So Vector AI is really have a good partnership with the BitTiger to take the risks, to take all the energy, all the spirit, all the knowledge to building an autonomous vehicle into two weeks intensive class that actually give you an opportunity to become a self-driving car engineer. Now, um, Steve, I think, I think some, some folks have some questions. Should we start having open some Q and A? Mike's gonna feed questions. Yeah, right now uh, there's none in the queue right now. So I think you can keep going. All right. So we, we build this class and then people keep asking why, why, what makes us different? What makes us so, so much special about this class? What makes us kind of like really want to make it happen and keeps getting excited about it. Think about it this way, put it this way. You want to market yourself in the next 20 years from now. And then, everybody's racing to become a self-driving car engineers. The massive open online course, it has a tremendous amount of hours to, to learn about it. And also there is a lot of good people, extraordinary people that I ever met that actually increase up to 11,000 people. Now, in the next five years from now, if we see this way, you gotta ask yourself, how I can be stand up over this 11,000 people today. In the next five, 10 years from now, these 11,000 people will create a new competitions, will create a new ecosystems, will create a new job opportunity, okay? So we want to be different. That the reason of this class happens is, we see the pain point of learning, building and, and self-driving car itself, but taken from myself taken over my, my experience from, from building it from, from nothing. And then we compile this, we, we, we ask many people, what's their actual passion when they want to build something? So we look into it and then we understand that some exclusiveness happens here if you can go to really, you know, um, really high standard university, for example, like Stanford, Berkeley, Cornell, or any kind of, of this university, you can have opportunity to 
have a such of of tools and community to to build all these things, right? But apparently, this happens when when you can enter that university. And some of the engineers that I I come with, I mean, my friends from Google's and from Twitter and Baidu, when when they say like, hey, how how can you how can you make a a real fully autonomous vehicle? How can you make um um you test your algorithms? How how you can how you actually run your um and is that in your simulations or in the in the smaller test platform? Even out the itself, out uh, the engineering people, they they ask that what's your strategy to validate your neural networks, model and weights, for example. And I usually say like we are using simulations, and I'm surprised that Audi counter back to me that actually say, well, we're not using simulations. We're using one of our eight scale of cars. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed. And then what kind of cars is it? And we have our own cars. Oh, okay, I understand that. And then and then and then the conversations goes that. Okay, so what's the benefit of in having like a smaller vehicles or, or RC cars in this case? There are three things that actually really, really beneficial in, in actual implementation of self-driving cars. So first one is you can build a small world. MIT has a really good um, overview making their own ducky town. So it's a full of ducks, but actually that ducks is a, a four wheels automobiles and then that it can do a self-driving in, in a certain area, which just means it's really cool. So it's basically validation, validating your, your neural networks or whatever you develop and implement it. Second is actually testing the new technology. So before the production scale is ready um, in OEs or tier one, tier twos, uh, block of chains, they usually need to have some sort of tools to validate their, their process. They need to validate their, their systems. And that's the reason some of, some of folks, they say like, Hey, is that, is that your, your product? Is that, is that your algorithms is actually part of the ISO 26262 for you that that's new in this area. ISO 26262 is actually a safety certifications for any kind of uh, vehicles products. And, and, and then the last things of having beneficial of uh, the RC cars is actually you can test a new sensors. You can test integrations with the sensors that actually close to what actually happens in the real car for production. So there's a huge opportunity here. A huge means that you know how you just have like three core functions of having um, um, RC car itself, but actually you can drag off what you've been doing in the meantime to your potential employers. Now, is this is this something that we're gonna ship? No, we're not. We're not gonna ship just only simulations. Remember, my Audi experience is something that makes us Vector AI and BitTiger wants to make as much this this class happens. But yeah, this is not something that we're going to ship. This is not something that we actually that we're going to ship. So um, what actually we're going to ship is something that giving you an experience or what what you actually want to learn and what actually what you will learn. So think about this way. This class will give you more understanding. This class will give you more hands on overview of about what you can go up and beyond. Now, for today, what is actually a self-driving car engineer? What defines a self-driving car engineer? So perhaps you think about like, I know deep learning, I know good standard software engineering, and I know how to deal with the uh, hardwares or, or controls or any kind of these things. But apparently to become a self-driving car engineer is not only just because of this, these combinations, and then the, the only ways that you can see today that you got from other people that you learn is actually online delivery with milestones. You cannot go into that certain milestone, you cannot keep it up, then you won't be able to test and brag up about what you accomplish. So it's a longer process, it, it has terms, and then it's online. So what we're gonna do? 
what we're going to do, what we see here is the benefit of having all these courses in the ecosystems and we create a new ecosystem, which is Vector AI providing you the hardware and the offline. Now, in this skill set matrix, right, what actually happens in the software and in the hardware? So, in the deep learning portion, we know that we're not going to have a tensor flow, you know, shipping into the car. Well, it, it, eventually you use that in the development phase, not in the production phase. So that's the reason they have what it's called as GIE. It stands for GPU Inference Engine or, or Interface. And then this is actually shipped as a tensor real time. Okay. So what, what the beauty of the tensor real time is you can get into the level of the certification of ISO 26262, which is that's, that's what any kind of um, hardware that you have that can run in the tensor RT. So they like that way, tensor RT is part of the next feature for the deep learning for cars. Now computer visions, you need to know about the OpenGL and then um, the QT create a beautiful um, framework and then also combinations with the OpenCV, right? So OpenCV running on the SOCs and then combined with your pre-processing or your augmentation status, those are most likely mainly as an AI uh, portions in the next futures. Now, now the tricky part is the infrastructure. Many, many infrastructures today happens from the open source into the closed source. One of the favorite open source is ROS, Robot Operating Systems, which is some people I have a fear to learn that and get lost in the what is called as a ROS land. ROS land is somewhere that you dig to dive and then you don't know where to go. There's no any pointers and then it's open source. Nobody's supporting that, the drivers, or you have an issue with your hardware itself. And then the only people that could support you is just only the community. And in some sort of ways, it, it's not a good practice when you, yeah, when you just get started and then you want to develop something really cool. Like for example, PR2 robots that actually can, can grab um, a can or something, uh, you know, um, a bottle or, or some sort of that with, with, with you building that from the ground base or you, you build localization parts in the self-driving car from the ground base, which is that's, it's, it's really, really hard. Right. It's really hard infrastructure. Well, anyway, that's open source part. And then in the closed source part is more into like a polysync, electrobit, and then uh, even drive works. So these are most common. Oh, uh, one more thing is actually hypervisors. Hypervisors is another thing that actually giving you the infrastructure before you can have a flavors of all the um, upper layer infrastructures, for example, like uh, Linux, Android Auto, or QNX. QNX is from BlackBerry. If you drive, um, like, um, let me see, Linux Jeep, for example, and then you have a interface that you, you see on your display unit on your car is actually running QNX. And then under the QNX that actually controlling is all about the ECU, it's actually through the hypervisors. So these are what it's called infrastructure. Infrastructure is talking uh, some sort of a framework, again, that actually giving you the ability to talk with different many types of um, control units in the car. Now, in terms of the hardware, it, it gets into more, more serious because we're talking about the sensor fusions. Think about like Google Car, right? Imagine you want to build like similar things, uh, equipment like in DARPA back in 2005 and 2007, and that that was the root of a Google Car. Sebastian Trude, Anthony Lewandowski's, and uh, Jesse Levinson's, those are the guys that actually doing the great jobs um, building sensor fusion stacks. So what is sensor fusion in this case? Sensor fusion is a knowledge that actually giving you understanding to help uh, the car itself to be able to localize and do certain things like a mapping throughout the ways, I mean, simultaneously. And that's the reason part of the output of sensor fusions is actually you get a slam, right? So now how in terms of the next hardware things that connect into the sensor fusions is actually vehicle networks, LIN, FlexRay, CAN, high-speed CANs, low-speed CANs. These are most common known hardware um, that actually 
people been asking and or also been missing in the being a self-driving car hardware and software stack understanding can how is messaging how the the streams how how eight bytes how fast they 11 bytes and then different can ids that coming together in the vehicle networks is giving you more um more appealing to to employers to that actually um doing doing a real business in the cars now in terms of uh hardware hardware itself is combining between all this together into sort of um sort of uh ecosystems that i will say like it's not ecosystems but it's more combining these together and the last part is more into about vehicle dynamics right think about this way if you if if you steer on your car and you have electronic power steering in your car and then today the car when you move when you turn the car how come the cars can be like so smoothly so easy to move because of the power steering and that's because of the electronic torques for example now that affects into the vehicle dynamics itself then how how you understand the acronym steering how you understand about davis steerings right so that's one of the examples talking about the hardware controls combining with pid which is proportional integrate integrations and derivatives of how you can control all these strings together. Those are what related in the hardware to become a self-driving car engineers. You need to have a taste of all this software and hardware together as a one piece. Now, um, again, back to the, the class, right? We want to make this as unique as possible to create a better future trans transportations ecosystems for employers like vector ai and then also employers like nvidia for example that are actually giving you opportunity to work with these guys so this is what we call as a driving revolution experience hey andrew um yes just a quick pause before you deep, go into the details a couple of questions have come up uh, one yeah. quick one um which i think is you have an interesting story about so how did you pick up all this knowledge how do I pick up on the noise? It's actually all these trees. I've been a mentor in the self-driving car nano degree, and also I've been um, quite advised them how to build that MKZ. And also I learned a lot from the papers. Archive is the best place when, when you want to dig dive, what's the implementations, but that's more into AI portions. And also relate with my previous work um, in the Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin. So it's not only just, just I, I know everything just by one night. And then I'm, I'm always been obsessed with the cars since I was in college. So in college itself, I, I did my own uh, mechanical um, certifications, ASME. And then also um, I learned a lot directly to the people in the community, like like the, the partners, the networks of the people that actually hiring in, in the meetups and then also in the groups. And also another thing that I learned is I learned a lot by, by doing things. So un until today, until I can get the cars is actually up and running, it keeps, even though it failings, even though it, it has a lot of problems in the car, we, we try to figure it out. You know, for example, uh, one, one really good example is, um, when when i was driving my self-driving car and and testing it in mexico my electronic power steering fails and then the cars is actually cannot cannot be rotated and then it was on the highway um going down into san ydicero and then the car was like this shaking like this i i gotta take over control of the car it was scary because the car literally can can crash into the left side and the right side the electronic power steering was completely off and then and then uh, eventually um the, the technique here to debug it was was not tracing the signals coming out in the ecu itself but actually i restart the whole things i restart the whole cars and then restart everything and, and works right but it's scary it's, it's, it's really scary it's really scary when you ship a product that actually gonna have eventually it's gonna happen on that so and then after that failures we came back into the garage and then try to figure it out what's the actual problem of of the um, of the control systems in the car, so so that's how I'm picking things up. I mean, we fail many times, 
we know how crashes is real. We know that certain things it's it's gonna break, and we try to to take a baby step, take a one step at a time to debug it, to to really focus on it. Even even for the AI part, we know that end to end learning it has it's not like a black box that you know um, it's gonna work eventually by some sort of points, but it's it's part of the iterations and 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 learning it. Yeah, one one more question before we go in, and I think this is an interesting one because I think people are curious because you did it from scratch. They're kind of curious the design decisions you made when you were making your car, right? Because there's you could there's so many choices, what sensors, what learning models. So uh, Paul from the audience is asking, when using reinforcement learning and self-driving, which of the methods are used generally? For example, DQN or policy gradient. Um. I, I didn't get the last question. Um, using reinforcement learning, mm -hmm. or which methods are generally used? And he gave some examples: uh, DQN or policy gradient. Well, that's actually interesting. That's that's really good questions. Um, I think when you say reinforcement learning, right? We we intend to think about the more the policy making, right? Because that that the policy making is make you a state and the actions of the actual cars. So at this moment, we will say like we tune the policy itself and then let the cars is actually learn from the um, gener um, uh, generator and our discriminator. So we, we have a kind of like a transition modes that actually that's part of. So if, if we think about the network itself, just abstractly, we say, so you have a discriminator here and you have um, you have a generator here, and then this is actually what you applying the variational encoder and feeding into the output of my policy makers. So these are actually, in, in layman's terms, this is outputting all the image based on the point clouds, cameras, trigger reconstructions, and stereo disparity. So those are the outputs that I'm making. And then the output of that is actually the controls of the car. I'm pretty simple. Yeah, and the well, that's, that's how we. The, uh, here's the interesting thing: that's how we started. But today, that's not how how we improve it. We we can do um, that one works when when you want to do um, sort of the highway driving. But when you want to do that the in urban environment, that type of strategy is basically going to fail. We we have more and more advanced strategy on doing that, which is which is reinforcement learning is is um, is what we bet today rather than solving in the GAN perspective, because, because the GAN itself is hard to train. That's, that's basically what it is. The data is never get any, any linears and, and, and some sort of point, we, we seen a lot of failures on that. Hey, uh, Andrew, the second part to that question, which I know the answer to, but some people may be wondering, when you're training your car, are you doing it in a simulation environment or actually on the road? RC car. Leave it on an RC car. Well, I, I don't know. When you took me for a test drive, it seemed like you were training it on the road as well. But yeah, both. <laughs> well, you drive well, over to Mexico. RC car to do is it. one of it, right? Yeah. RC car is one of it because you need yeah. you need to get the the um, you know PID right. algorithms get validated and all the uh, the model and weight is ready to ship. Th those are the things that it's it's really hard to to implement in, in simulations, right? What you have in the simulations is what it's, it's not going to happen in the real world. Well, right. sort of, I mean, if you want to do, we, we will get into that. We'll get into that, what, what actually, you know, what, what we're building. And was that so, part of your motivation for doing the full, like one tenth size RC cars, the mini cars is because that'll enable them to do the same kind of work. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Even, even, you know, um, people at the Google itself, like people that been tinkering in the, in, in the lab, right? And what what they're doing for the Project Tango is actually they they have that that uh what is that the the, the tablet or the phone that actually um, testing their own slam in the RC car before they actually deploy that in the real environment because you you deal with the real environment it's hard if you have your own simulated uh you know kind of like learning simulator data sets or or you have certain of knowledge base that you already have before to reinforce that for the next level. That's actually really hard to have. And then some of them, they're not realistically available on, on, on public. All right, so 
so you know um let me back into the the presentations again so we see that Udacity has their awesome self-driving car nano degree. That's that's great, right? Three terms, almost a year, and then many various projects. And also the second thing is deep learning for self-driving cars by MIT, which is that's also interesting, the interesting part. And also Coursera machine learning by Andrew Ng, which is it, it covers also autonomous driving. None of this is giving you an opportunity to understand more into the hardware. Instead, when we ask about the hardware, they say like, yeah, we don't offer that. It's not, it's not main focus of, of, of what we are. It's not main focus what we're doing. So when I asked them and then when I discussed with these guys and I said like, well, how about the car itself? I mean, is that, is that the car is, is a hardware? Yes, the car is a hardware, but you cannot go into the hardware until you get into term three or even you be able to get into term three. So at this point, well, why I spend my time and then why I spend my, my money and my resources to learn all these things, right? So those are the things that makes me kind of like, well, I want to go home and then I want to take the knowledge that I have and I want to implement it in the real hardware that makes me you know, obsessed with it, makes me want to brag with it. When I go out with my friends and then when I go out with my fellows or hang out with my friends and they say like, hey, I built this. Uh, even though it's one over 10 and it can be scalable into a real car. So that's something cool. That's something that all these guys, all this MOOC, I mean, MOCC, they, they're not seeing that unless you become a Udacity robotic, Robotics project i mean but those are focused more in the robotics not the self-driving car even and even the hardware is not powerful now but what we're gonna get okay so i have seen questions about the hardware earlier so are we gonna ship something like this are we gonna get something like this on a car raspberry pi a couple of sensors and arduinos no this is not what you're gonna get i promise what you're gonna get is to call it Jetson TX2, which is, it's able to run a SecNet in the 30 frames per second, which is really cool. SecNet is cool, I like that. Um, it's really useful when, when you want um, to have a object detection in steroids and you can improve it by zero disparities or having like a bonding boxes. And then a latest technologies with a Pascal and Denver CPU, similar to like what you have in the, the latest uh, Titan X or even the Drive BX. And then generally speaking is a Raspberry Pi on steroid. And then it has opportunity to scale into advanced driving assistance applications, which is, this is really cool. Seriously, this is really cool. People in the, um, what's that name? Uh, ADAS work, or right now they call AI Motive. When they did the project with Mercedes, they use the similar platform like this, which is their earlier platform, which is just in TK1, T and K1. And right now what we're giving to you is actually uh, Jetson TX2 and each of the student will take it's this bad as hardware, whole, period. Now, talking about infrastructure. People sometimes they fear about ROS. Uh, I don't know ROS, I, I kind of like afraid to, to touch that because it's so complex and then, you know, I know ROS, all right? Fine, I know ROS and then I know how to do with it. I know to deal with it. I know how to connect the integrations with with the sensors, but I'm not pretty comfortable doing stuff with deep learning. So don't worry about it. Don't be fear about it. Eventually, if you want to be self-driving engineers, this is the tools that people have been talking. And then we want you to know more about this. We want you to learn more, giving a hands-on priority in the in the higher space, knowing much about ROS, how ROS implemented, how the um, Hector Slams implemented in the ROS. Right, so these are, uh, and also the path planning in the rocks, for example, that, that's an important, important part. So these are the things that we're gonna talk about Ross more into the infrastructure. Without this infrastructure, you cannot talk with the many different life sensors. So we cover Ross. Now, how about the sensor fusions, right? So RC car, um, I keep emphasizing a lot about sensor fusions. Sensor fusions is basically like you combining all the information from the sensors into something meaningful for the car itself. So from SLAM, 
deep learning, computer visions, localizations, path planning. Those are types of things that you will compile in the part of the sensor fusions. So as you can see here, um, earlier after you adapted from the RC cards, what you can do is actually you bring that into bigger RC cards, which is that much more interesting with the battery power. As you can see, there's a there is a 12 volts battery that usually put in the car, right? So th those are like, like you know, my daughter maybe in the next year, next two three years from now, is gonna want one of this, but I think my daughter is gonna get like something with self driving capability more than that. So this is something that you can build after you've done the RC car, and then eventually you can take the same um, same framework of of platform into the golf cart, or even the real fully, you know, not one over 10 cars is a full size car. So that's are the things. And controls, we're gonna cover controls. I, at the beginning, I mentioned that about earlier a bit about Ackerman steering, PID controls, right? What are the difference, vehicle dynamics, right? So we, we're gonna cover this type of controls and then we're gonna deep dive into how you implement controls in the RC car, how you're gonna implement all of these things together as, as one, as self racing RC cars or self driving RC cars. Now, together, here's what you're gonna implement. You're gonna implement the depth reckoning. You're gonna have a slam. You know, using Arvis in in Ross, getting familiar with it. Have the knowledge of the center fusion, putting all the things together, and also knowing about that planning from from waypoints you get from point A to point B. And then also we have a deep learning, predicting the steering angle, predicting um, the throttle brakes and speeds based on the information that you get from the bedrock and slams, distributions, and path planning. And also we talk about controls. We talk about the vehicle dynamics. We talk about the PIDs. We talk about how you implement the common filters in the real cars. So that's basically what we're going to cover within two weeks. This is already hard. This is more, if, if, if Compared to university, this is actually the whole semesters. But we give you the opportunity to do it in two weeks. And then you, at the end of, of, of the class, at the end of the training course, is actually you'll be able to see it run by itself, hopefully. Now, what's I want to Yes, go ahead. Hey, I want to just add one thing there, because it is a lot of content really quick. Um, and we know that. And it's actually, we think it's to your advantage to kind of do it immersive, all intensive and get it all at once, right? It's more efficient to put it together. But on top of that, um, the class is really just the start, right? So Andrew's there to help you give you all the basics and he's gonna go about to go through the RC car platform and how you know comprehensive it is as a learning platform for you to keep going after the two weeks. So you you get all the basics, you basically you get a jump start on the full hardware and software stack but you get to keep adding features and learning um, among the community after you're done with those two weeks. Yeah, it doesn't stop. Same like mine, myself. I never stop. I'm being obsessed with it. I keep continue doing it. And then what actually you're getting in the RC car platform is almost similar to what we have in the ILX, which is the accuracy Hondas, right? You have cameras, you have a stereo, uh, stereo depth cameras, Intel RealSense, we got LiDARs from the NITO, and we got the IMUs, inertial measurement units, which is this is good practice when you want to get like a degree of freedoms on the cars, knowing the cars, um, the, the situations of the cars helps in the localizations and giving you also the opportunity to validate the ground truth with the LIDAR. So these are the things that you can have in the RC car platform to make the car is driving autonomously. And of course, with the Xbox controller. Now, this is pictures taken from the uh, self racing days. So Chris Anderson from uh, Do It Yourself Robocars, he, he had a really um, good community. And then his community focusing on the people uh, like me, like you, like everybody that interested in a self-driving car that actually building their own platform and then race it. So average when they make this from either from Raspberry Pi or BeagleBone or um, any types of computers, even some guys they, they did with Pine64. These are, these are computers that actually running uh, as the 
as a platform for the implementing the brains of the cars or the deep learnings, the models and weights into uh, being self-driven. And then it's, it's really interesting. Hopefully we can make something like this on the demo day, which is we, we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it at the demo day. The things that we hope that you can be there with us and then have this all the fun and experience together. So, Thanks, oops. So, um, job perspective. This is this is another thing that I want to say. Okay. I took a quote from one of the greatest hacker that I know and that I met during the self racing cars. You know who he is. Um, he said, "Don't start a company if you don't know the market." So. I took that a really thoughts into really deep. And then I think that um, right now today is the time that people that want to switch the jobs between the regular jobs into a real jobs that we, which is going to driven in the next 20 years and disrupt the world and build something is actually today. As you can see that the market itself is growing and then employers, startups and uh, OEs, OEMs, they they actually looking for the special talents. They're looking for this kind of people that actually understand enough and go get the duty job done, get the things done, software and hardware together. So completing all this stack between the hardware and the software will will help you accelerate to be job market ready in, in terms of a self driving car. It's not least when when people come into the company, when the when always looking at, and also tier ones when they come to the company they they look at your github they they test you with how you code but instead having all those paradigms and thoughts is the coolest things that you ever come is is actually you bring your cards i mean you show that hey i've done something like this and check it out i've done slam i've done that, that reckoning I've done the, all the uh, deep learning, heavy deep learning things that actually related with the actual work. It gives people or even employers more promising rather than just looking at the resumes. So you want to be disruptive, you want to be different, you want to be super unique, you want to be like really hustling in this market because you want to be stand up in, in front of all the 11,000 people that are actually doing the online course and then, and then this is the opportunity that, that actually we bring all this opportunity together. Now, trust me, it's going to be fun. Okay. When I go talk to always, this is actually the first picture is what always things I, we do in, in vector AI. And I talked to my mom that my mom said, Oh yeah, you may, you may carve the run itself with, with hybrid switch. Well, no, it's not like that, mom. It, it's just driving by the AI and you have infrastructures that actually driving the cars become more intelligent. And when I break to my friend, they say like, yeah, your car is like from space, alien. <laughs> and then you have a rotating something on the, on the top of your car, they think it's cameras, but no, it's not. And then um, talk to the NHTSA, talk to the DOT, um, what thing actually I'm doing, and then explain to them, oh, you're gonna build um, a massive weapon of, of the futures, or you know, you're not in the moral machines. What if it hits people? Blah blah blah. Okay, I gotta explain. This is beta testing. This is not ready yet for productions. Um, what I think I'm doing, I'm I'm, I'm building a, the next um, generations for autonomous vehicle. But what I actually do is using the like what <laughs> what Steve said about the simulations using GTA Five to run Segment. All right, so, so again, what you think is today, but try to believe in tomorrow, and then this class is built for tomorrow, and then trust me, it's gonna be fun. All right, All I right. think we're ready for the questions. Yeah, we have, a, we have uh, one here. Um, so what level is, they're curious what level Vector AI's car is at now. We are in the level three currently, and then we have applications coming soon that um, that pretty much we want to keep it secret right now. We're working on it, and then and then yeah, I would say it's level three. Got it. Okay, just looking through here to make sure we got all these ones. 
I'm kind of curious. Can you give a quick um, a quick overview of what a day in the class is going to look like? So I know we're working with you. It's going to be a split between some talks where you explain the theory, but then also kind of a workshop environment. Yeah, the class itself is going to be more workshop environment, more focused on you as the um, students. Um, and then, you know, uh, eight hours a day, more oh, eight, nine hours a day. And then um, the first morning, it's going to give you much more a theory. And then after the lunch break, we're going to go over into the, you know, building the things, tinkering, looking at the um, looking at the Jetsons and then looking all the things together and put all the things uh, as a one size. Now there's a question. Can I buy the course RC car on the web? So yeah, I can, I think I can clarify that one. So we, so a big part of this class is that we are sourcing all the pieces to that car. So can you, can you go back to the picture of the car, Andrew, the RC car? Yeah. So, so right now, as we speak, Andrew and I are working on, getting you a Jetson TX2 developer kit and getting you the cameras and the car and doing most of the machining work. So a big part of this class is assembling this very unique hardware set. So even, even comparing to some university project teams, this is a very advanced RC car autonomous vehicle. So to, to summarize, uh, you don't need to buy the car separately. It's part of the class. We, assemble, we get the car parts for you. Another question. Hey, Andrew, do you have any suggestion on learning ROS on my own? Any website or open source classes? Well, um, uh, Lantin Joseph, uh, he has a great book um, learning about ROS, but that book is more towards into projects. I would not recommend that if you know nothing about ROS and then you want to jump in directly to ROS. Um, instead, you can learn from the um, community based uh, ROS, wiki.ros.org, right, which is, or wiki.ros.com, which is, that's the, um, the web page for the ROS. Install ROS, get familiar with it, break things, break your Capkin workspace, you know, build it again, break your drivers. The, the only best way, my advice to learn ROS is actually you break things. If you don't break things, you're not learning. Um, there was one question on whether you could take it, I think Steve answered by text, but someone was asking if you could take it online. Um, this is offline, this class, um, and you know, a lot of our other, you know, all of our other classes are online, and the reason this one is offline and is different is, you know, partly because it's a more immersive experience because it's a lot of content quickly and it's a complex topic, but um, it's also because you're interacting with the hardware, so it needs to be offline. Though the class will be recorded, right? Yes, we'll have videos. So if you come to the offline class and you have to miss part of a class to take care of something, we can help you get the recordings. But I don't think you'll be able to follow the whole class remotely uh, without ever being there in person. Yeah, so don't worry if you miss some notes or something. Uh, everybody that's coming into Draper University will have, will have that recorded video so you can repeat it. Which is that? That's really cool. And then um, I think I think is that um, just to to verify is the team team Braver is gonna come in the demo day? Um, I don't want to I don't want to guarantee it. I mean he's around. It's his. Uh, so just to give some context, right, this class is being uh, host hosted by Draper University, which is an off a real you know offline university in San Mateo, California. And um, it's possible he'll come by. Tim Draper is a famous venture capital investor who founded the school. Um, there was another question on learning resources. So we talked about, um, there's an earlier question on how much prerequisite knowledge do you need? And we answered by text saying, you know, knowledge of C++ and Python is helpful, um, just so you don't have to learn the syntax, but you know, we're there to help you, right? So if you have the basic knowledge of those two languages, we're there to help you. And if you feel like you need to learn more about those two languages before you come, uh, we'll have an ebook. So we'll have an online learning resource just like the GitHub that someone asked about, they said, will you put learning resources on GitHub? We'll put them in an ebook, which is like a, it looks almost like a Wikipedia page and you'll be able to get all of the learning resources you need to prepare for C++ or Python basic knowledge. 
and other topics like Ross. I mean, we're going to put together a whole uh, primer that you can use to uh, to get some knowledge of each of these steps. And you know, is it possible this could be done online in the future? Maybe, but I, I still think the point of how we're doing it this round and this format is kind of it's a two week immersive. Uh, otherwise, you know, the other programs that try to do it online, it's like nine months to get all this knowledge. You mm -hmm. could really come here and get your hands dirty with all this stuff and leave with a fully functioning RC car um, and, and have a platform that you could use. And, you know, I run our engineering team at BitTiger and I keep telling everybody here, like, even if somebody walked in as a full stack engineer or an AI engineer with a self-driving car, like, I'm going to be blown away that you went and took the initiative to do that. So I think you know, actually going and working with the hardware and producing the whole kit is really uh, how we envision this class going. Yeah, that's true, because we want to give you a real experience building your own, like the class title, building your own, it's, it's some of, you know, definitely you will scratch your head. I, I have no guarantee on that. I have no guarantee that it's going to be easy, but you will scratch your head at some point. The joy that if you can overcome with any kind of solutions that you want, you know, solve this problem, it's actually giving you more confidence when you want to apply a job at the end of the day. That actually that I, I hey, I, I overcome this obstacle and I've done it. So it gives you more confidence in front of, of the interviewers or uh, hiring managers or even the C-level people that actually you built something. You built real cool stuff in, in, in your time and you want to spend things on it. You want, you really think about that. And that's, that's, that's already show that you're driven by the passion. And in better AI, what we believe is if you have a passion, you have, no matter what, what you do is you, you can, you'll be able to change the future. And then that's the reason like why this class is so important for the Tiger and Vector AI, because we want to democratize the self-driving car technologies to people that are actually passionate and giving them an opportunity that actually they can do something. So, so yeah, I, I think, I think Steve uh, mentioned about it, um, overview about the class. And then I think there was also questions about limitations about the class. Did we answer that? Um, I think it may have been answered by text. Yeah, yeah I okay, did good. Oh, okay. Okay, and Sandeep asking, what is the cost? The cost right now, early bird, if you sign up, is 6500 and that's including the hardware kit. Yep. And a kind of another note on the hardware kit. Um, so that's including things like uh, Jetson TX2, which is $600 off the shelf. Right, that's, that starts right there. And we have a special agreement with, um, you know, with the supplier to get a discount, but you know, the assembly of this hardware alone um, is really quite a bit of value uh, built into that price. And one really interesting thing that Andrew really insisted on because he wanted the learning experience to be as authentic as possible. Um, he showed you example cars where they used a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino. He insisted that we use the Jetson TX2, which is, you know, production level ready hardware to actually be put into an autonomous vehicle. So this right. kit is is really training you at a level that a perfect, like I, I call it the jump start because you'll keep learning after the class, but the level of hardware we're giving you is really training you to be ready for real industry applications of autonomous vehicles. There's another question here. Will this class be open again in the future or this is one in a lifetime? Well, think about this way, three years from now, there will be a huge race that people need to deliver any kind of types of application, framework, um, hardware in autonomous driving space, right? If we say like the net, you know, we open in the futures, we don't know, honestly, we don't know. And then- We, we had to, I mean, I mean, you're in the middle of launching a startup just to get you and your time to come do this for two weeks now. I mean, it's a lot, to coordinate, I, I hope we run it again in the future, but but it probably won't be run again this year. Yes, yes. Um, and then also the market itself, you've raised with the people. And then this is this is the right time, right moment, and the right place, the right people that executing this. 
and then this is all for you to be able to catch up before the next three five years from now you late in the game and the way and you know the reason this isn't scheduled to repeat is it's it, the vision is really different for this class um the reason it's such an intensive schedule and you're going to be offline and we even have living arrangements with Draper University. You can stay in the building at Draper University. Um, they basically have uh, hotel rooms. It is an old hotel converted into a university. So, you know, people are going to be staying together in the same space. This is a really unique, pretty much once in a lifetime, unless we can pull it off again, opportunity uh, for people who are like Andrew keeps saying it. He's such a passionate guy. This is people who have been waiting to get into the self-driving car space and want to just dedicate two weeks to just getting a really big jump start into it. And I think people, you know, there's class for eight hours a day, but I won't be surprised if people after class are still tinkering with their car and their code because you're going to be in the same place together and everyone's coming together for the same purpose. Yeah, and for those out of town as well, I think Draper University, it's right in the heart of Silicon Valley. They run a big startup incubator. There's lots of entrepreneurs around. Um, BitTiger and particularly Mike, we run like a massive uh, business development effort where we connect to lots of industry partners and we have lots of people that are gonna show up on, on the racing day and we, we're gonna be making announcements soon uh, of some more high profile people that we think are going to attend. So if you're from out of town too, this is really, this is your chance to come to Silicon Valley, come to like a startup incubator university where you can, you know, go from zero to one in this new field of, of self-driving tech. So, I mean, I think it's cool whether you're a hobbyist that just wants to build your own tech or whether you really want to maybe move from an engineering job where you're just doing, I don't know, regular application development into a more high impact field where, you know, this technology, this is your way to break into this field and really have an impact over the next 10 years. Um, so yeah, yeah, I think, I think uh, anybody that really wants to jump in head first, this is a good chance to do it. Where did you mount the TX2 on the car? Do you offer any chances for online? I think we answered that the, the online uh, probably this time. No. And where did, where did you mount the TX2 on the car? Well, just come and see. Just get get getting to Draper University, and then you experience it. You don't know where where you mount the car. All right, if that's it on questions, we'll leave. So this uh, just to explain the slide on the screen here. You can contact us through WeChat. You can scan that QR code through email um, shin x i n at bittiger.io. And then we've also added some people to the Slack channel. So feel free to ask questions there as well. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for attending. And Andrew, anything else you wanna add? Trust me, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, uh, a couple, uh, and Sandeep, I just saw you ask where to enroll for the class. So either tonight or definitely by tomorrow, we are going to be uh, sending a follow-up email to everybody from this presentation. Uh, there is a class page on our website, bittiger.io, that I'll link you to. The recording of this class is going to go up on there. There's also going to be more and more logistical stuff coming out that will be published on that page. So that'll be like the focal point. Well, you can either be in Slack, you can either add Shin on the slide that you see on the screen right now, or you can come via the website to that class page. Those are kind of the focal points for staying in touch about uh, this class. So. We will definitely follow up with you on that. Um, and Andrew, one last question came in just on uh, what, just maybe if you, I, I didn't go too much into detail about, you know, what is Vector AI, do, AI doing? If you want to talk for maybe just one minute about the startup. We help always anybody tier ones to excellent delivery of smart car. That's what we're doing. Basically your training module is a unique piece of, of IP and basically your, your techniques for training uh, can be saving these companies a lot of time. That was my understanding. Mm, yeah, you can say that, but I think I'm, I'm more focused in, in, in the student itself, giving them the mm -hmm. aware and the, that knowledge to build mm -hmm. the most power. Mm -hmm. All right, I think. All right.
I think that's it, right? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. I really enjoy um, talking with you guys, so sharing the insights. Thank you. Great. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll follow up with the link when uh, when we have it up there. We should also link, you know, Andrew, I know you just dropped off. Andrew has some older lectures we can link you to as well. Uh -huh.